Hello everyone, my name is Alchemy, welcome to the channel. Today, you and I are going to be getting down to the bottom of base plant versus current. This isn't going to be a which one is better, it's more going to be of if you are only wanting to get one of them, what is going to be the right direction for you. I will kind of say right off of the bat before I go into the, any of the other details that if you want something that is endless and something that will kind of go as far as your computer can go, then go for phase plant. If you want something that is quicker access to sounds, uh, something that even has a cloud service library of new presets that come on the regular, then go for current. Uh, that's kind of the bottom line. Uh, with that being said, I'm not here to waste your time, but if you do enjoy my content, would love it if you could like the channel, subscribe. I've got content banks for both of these on alchemy.com. And let's talk about why you might want to purchase one of these if you are getting into sound design or music production. Let's go ahead and pull up an instance of both of these. And we're gonna talk about current first because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to get to. So the thing about current and phase plant is that they're not actually that different other than their layouts and their routing and stuff, but really they're designed to be something that provides wavetable, provides FM. Um, I will say that current tries to focus more on having high quality effects even though they are limited whereas the snap-ins and stuff i think are designed to be relatively cpu friendly with phase plant but there's like an infinite number of effects and modulators and stuff that you can get into so yeah if you know serum you know vital then you know both of these it might not seem like it with phase plant but it's very easy i've already compared the two to show you how to set up that in case if that's how you like to work but some of the really interesting features that current has is the wave morphing on here that has a lot of different options but the drawback to this is that for some reason current does not have a wavetable maker and so if you like to do everything from scratch all that other stuff current might not be the choice for you just because um yeah it doesn't have like all of those like super customizable options even though these are really cool things to have that being said the biggest draw behind current is the stream and what this offers is a bunch of different sounds presets wavetables something of the like that you can subscribe to a service that will constantly update you with new presets and sounds and whatnot and so this is a really fast way to get up and going of being like yo i don't know what i want but i am looking for something that's kind of bassy so maybe i'll pick this and we'll be like okay let's try substation and then you can just demo a sound without having to load it which is very nice <laughs> You're like, okay, cool, that one. And then you can load it in and then make subtle tweaks and stuff to it. So it's very convenient in that way. Um, I will also say, as I mentioned before, that I do think that the effects themselves, so the individualized effects, which you can get these separate than just the synth, um, are very high quality. They sound great. And if you know me, I use Fuse Compressor on everything, everything. It's not to say that you can't build nice effects and racks and stuff within the kilohertz ecosystem, but this is really designed to kind of be, make it feel like a premium product, uh, especially with things like Morphe Q and having all these options and stuff. For me personally, I think that from a, just a, a sound output perspective, minimal audio actually quote unquote sounds better. But the trade-off is that I actually have a harder time getting this synth to sing quote unquote, like to make it, you know, to give it that magic than I do in Faceplant, but I think that's a bias thing because I've been using Faceplant since 2019. So what can you say? Uh, with that being said, there's also some new features within the 2.0 update that I recently covered. For example, you've got an XY pad and some really nice graphics. And unlike Faceplant, which I don't know if this does MIDI or not, I'd have to see, but this can lock stuff into a scale and a key. And then you've also got different chord and arpeggiator modes. That's not to say that you can't build pseudo arpeggiators and uh, chord builders on phase plant, so to speak. It's just that it's kind of already ready to go. And that could be a thing. The other thing is that, um, like I said, a lot of these like oscillators and filters and stuff are kind of built in. So there's a lot of things to pre-choose from. Whereas I think that if you use like a slice EQ or something within Faceplant, you can build all that stuff yourself and it sounds, you know, it's more versatile. It goes deeper. 
Um, but yeah, you've got your FM and your feedback and your routing um, and kind of all that stuff. But that's kind of all there really is to current for the most part. Um, this is really for like, how do I compare this? If you want something that is like a never ending snack that becomes this like incredible meal over time, then go for phase plant. But if you want something that's like a focused core package that has like really high quality stuff, even if it's limited, then again, uh, current might be for you. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about phase plant. Phase plant is my personal choice because even though the snap-ins, which are vast, uh, by the way, are not always the highest quality, there are so many options to make whatever the heck you want to make within this. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, for one, you can have unlimited effects. And two, this ecosystem of sound design really is like consumer friendly in the means of how it helps you, if you use it right, how it helps you build more complicated stuff over time. So for example, if I use one of these like, um, I guess hosts, which is multi-pass and snap heap, I have racks and things that I build that I can save as presets, which is pretty much honestly how I make the majority of my money. Um, but let's say I make an OTT, right? Well, now that I have this OTT, I can save this as a rack and map this to a macro or something. And now I've got this entire rack on a mix knob based off of these macros. And the power of that is, is immense because when you start thinking about combining stuff, say something kind of like this, maybe I do something kind of like this and you start being like, oh, all of these racks have all this crazy modulation and all of these crazy effects that are built in and I can start turning stuff on, then it's like, uh, it's, it's pretty immense on what you can do with phase plan in the long run. Like I said before, they also have a built-in wavetable maker, which is really nice. Um, some other things that are unique to this as far as effects is uh, current has the riff distortion, which I think sounds really good, but this has not only a custom wavetable shaper, uh, sorry, a custom wave shaper, but also a customizable wavetable shaper. And so if you wanted to make your own distortion shapes and stuff, you absolutely could. And then if you want to make a wavetable into a distortion unit, you can do that too, which is crazy. Now, remember when I said that this ecosystem works for you? So if you make a wavetable in here, you can also use it as a wavetable here. You can also use it as a wavetable LFO, LFO table is what they call it, on this. And so you made one thing, but now it's applicable to all this other stuff that just kind of, like I said, keeps working for you. And, you know, yeah, I do think that maybe the algorithms and stuff of the sound engine could be improved. But honestly, to me, this is most likely the most comprehensive synth that I've used. It's considered to be semi-modular, so it's designed to streamline all of the routing issues that you get whenever you're using like the grid or you're using VCV rack or something and put it in a package that is easy to understand where the signal flow goes, right? Because you've got oscillators that go to effects, then you have modulators on the bottom that control them. That's it. Once you understand that, then you understand this synth because that's all you have to do to map things. So anyways, I'm not trying to brag about this in particular, but I do want to talk about why you might want something like this. Um, I like to do everything from scratch. That's why phase plan is my jam. I do make a lot of stuff on current. Um, I, you know, worked on a preset pack and content and blah, 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 or whatever for it. But as cool as the effects were, I found myself getting into a lot of roadblocks because I honestly just needed more effects. And they, to, to their credit, again, they sound really good. Um, everything on here sounds great. They recently added the new wave shifter, which is a customizable ring mod slash frequency shifter slash uh, amplitude modulator, all that stuff all combined in one with cool like FM as an effect. Um, so these are definitely premium effects, but a lot of times I find myself needing more, wanting more, whatever. Call it a skill issue. I don't care. For some of the sound design that I do, it requires a lot of engineering and you kind of just need more stuff sometimes. Um, yeah. Uh, with that, the other thing that does kind of bother me about current in comparison is that I don't like the randomization stuff that they have because it sets it as a pattern as opposed to it being just kind of a constant smooth curve. And the way that this jumps and the way that this moves is just not my favorite in the way that this behaves. Um, I also don't think that this has, yeah, okay, it does have an amplitude, uh, an audio follower, which can sometimes re be really good for like drums and stuff, 
which I don't necessarily think that either one of these are better at drums, but they will give you different drums. But yeah, Current is really good at being like, I need inspiration. I need it right now. I need to go into this, find something that sounds kind of cool, make some subtle changes to it, and then call it a day to be able to throw into a track. And it, I think that it works really well. The splice mentality, the subscription stuff isn't what I would personally do, but there are a lot of people out there that maybe have recording artists coming in and all that other stuff. And that's why they reach out for things like this or stuff like Arcade, uh, Wink Wink, or, um, you know, those things that give you quick access to sounds like Splice and all that. There is a place for it. I just don't particularly bond and vibe with that. The other thing is that there is a dedicated subsampler which, I mean, I guess you could, you know, do this within a wavetable maker, but this is very convenient and has some cool different sounds on here that you can do. But um, yeah, this kind of has like one of everything. So it's got two wavetables, a granular, a sub, and a sampler, and the sampler and the granular stuff is fine. The thing is, is that the granular sampler within phase plant is kind of nuts. Um, and the free routing and being able to, for one, um, apply all of the things that you can with the way that you can randomize the positioning and, uh, sorry, that's not unique to this, but the way that you can FM stuff both to and from this, the chord stuff that it has built in and the customizable shaper to where you can make it any shape that you want to, that would be in the sense of an envelope is kind of, kind of a big deal. And then you can set it to different chord modes, which is also really cool. Um, you can make entire songs in this, which I have done. I did it on stream a few days ago. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the thing. But the question is, do you really want to? <laughs> do you want to go through the trouble of doing all that stuff? Or do you want something that is just going to be a lot more user friendly? And to me, I would say that this is just as user friendly. It's just that I think that people tend to become a little bit like, intimidated because it's empty at first but i mean literally if you just do this and then you're like distortion and then you're like limiter or let's say you wanted to bring up your typical stuff like chorus flanger reverb which also current does not have a convolution reverb so that's something to consider uh reverb what is it like stereo enhancer so maybe like an ensemble is like a dimension expander or something like suddenly, very quickly, you're starting to make this look a lot like Serum. You know, if you need another oscillator, you you can do that, or you can do a wavetable, and then you can do your routing, and then that's all built in. But this is a few steps to build even into a template where, you know, of course, current is just like, it's all there. You just turn the stuff on, and then you make selections and all that. I don't think that either one is better than the other. I think that you should demo these and figure out which one works for you. Because if you do that, then you're going to have a well-informed decision on what you vibe with. I've had a lot of people say that this one is better. I've had a, heard a lot of people say that, you know, phase plan is better. And I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, they'd rather use Surge or something. Those people are strange to me, but what can you say? Last little tidbit that I'll have on the phase plan engine is that if you build racks in here with multi-pass and snap peep, one of the biggest benefits to working within this ecosystem is being able to do this. Use your effect racks on other synths. And this is just hard to beat, you know, especially if you go through the trouble of like, imagine if like you had all of your serum patches of all the effects and stuff that you set up, but now you can use that in, you know, other things. But instead of it just being serum effects, which I know exists, you have like unlimited amounts of things that are put together in a package that you can just turn on and off. Hard to beat, man. Hard to beat, at least for me. So anyways, I know that I didn't really make any sounds and I just kind of talked through the whole thing, but I wanted to give you, you know, as much of a informed decision as I could to help guide you in making a choice. But I'm not here to make the decision for you. I'm here to present the information and say, Okay, what do you like? What is it that you want to do? If you came for sound demos, I'm sorry, that's probably not the video for you, but I did want to make sure that I gave you as much information as I could on how to make this stuff uh, work for you. But anyways, I've got tutorials on all this stuff on my website. I've got preset packs for both of these. 
and lots of Bitwig videos and whatnot. If you have any questions, just reach out. I'm happy to try to answer anything that you might have. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, especially if you got to the end. If you did get here, I would like to know what is your favorite childhood cartoon? Have a great rest of your evening, everyone. I'll see you next time.